Hyperrange Aviation, How New Platforms Redefine Maritime Stability Subtitle, Why the End of Carrier Dominance is Closer Than You Think If that smart home component or EV accessory you ordered online from Asia arrived at your doorstep in three days, it's not just due to efficient logistics algorithms. It relies on a fragile global maritime superhighway, specifically, the shipping lanes inside and outside the first island chain. We take this flow of goods for granted. But what if I told you that the security architecture protecting this trade, established since World War II, is being disrupted by a new physical reality, when we talk about new Chinese fighter jets? Mainstream Western media often quickly applies labels like threat or provocation. That generates clicks. But as tech observers, emotional interpretations cause us to miss the real technological signal. If we take off our geopolitical lenses and put on our engineering goggles, the story changes completely. It's not about anger, it's about a recalculation of distance and energy. Today, we dive deep into the platform widely reported by foreign media, codenamed the J36 by Chengdu Aerospace. Why would a machine described with a delta wing layout and a rare tri-engine design force military experts across the Pacific to reevaluate the survival probability of aircraft carriers. In this episode, I will bring you three insights you can take directly to your next industry discussion. 1.Why, in an era where fifth-gen fighters chase stealth, is this machine chasing extreme range? 2.How does the so-called flattened fuselage turn it into a launch pad for the hypersonic age? Three dot and the most critical point, how this technological path fundamentally alters our understanding of sea control. Part 1, the tyranny of distance and the 4,000 kilometers gambit. Let's start with a basic physics problem. Just as the U.S. developed the F-14 Tomcat during the Cold War to intercept threats at long range, modern air combat is still ruled by the tyranny of distance. According to recent reports and military assessments, the design core of China's J-36 seems to be challenging a limit, range. Reports suggest a maximum range of around 4,000 kilometers, with a combat radius locked between 2,200 and 2,500 kilometers. What does that mean? Simply put, that's roughly the distance from London to Moscow, patrolling overhead and returning without refueling. More specifically, it completely covers every corner of the first island chain. This isn't just about flying far, it's about persistent tactical presence. Let's pause and think, why is such extreme range necessary in this era? The answer lies in bases. The biggest vulnerability of a modern air force is its airfields. If you rely on short-range fighters, you need forward bases, which are incredibly fragile against modern missiles. The design logic of the J-36 is a counterintuitive survival strategy use massive internal fuel capacity to reduce reliance on forward tankers and bases, launching from the safer hinterlands to project power thousands of kilometers away. If these specs are real, they demonstrate a massive leap in aerodynamic efficiency and engine fuel economy by the Chinese aviation industry. This isn't simple imitation, it's a bespoke solution for a specific geographic environment, the vast Pacific. Analysis and Engagement this long-range design effectively pushes the defense perimeter out by 2,000 kilometers, creating a massive denial zone. If this becomes the standard, does the U.S. Navy's strategy of forward deployment need a complete rewrite? Share your thoughts in the comments. Part 2. The Airborne Arsenal Ship, Carrier of Hypersonics Next, let's look at the airframe. Another focal point for Western observers is the J-30SIXS unique delta wing and flattened structure. This design isn't just for stealth, it's for volume. According to analysis by U.S. experts, this massive internal bay isn't just for conventional air-to-air -air missiles. Crucially, it may be designed to house large-bodied hypersonic anti-ship weapons. This brings us to our second core concept, velocity asymmetry. Current U.S. carrier strike groups possess the world's densest defensive fire, capable of intercepting subsonic and even supersonic missiles. However, facing hypersonic missiles exceeding Mach 5 with unpredictable trajectories, existing Aegis systems face immense challenges in physics. 
Pentagon classified reports have noted that the increase in the quality and quantity of hypersonic weapons is a game-changing variable. The J-30 SIXS role here? You can understand it as a stealthy airborne truck. It uses stealth and maneuverability to penetrate radar networks, then releases these carrier killers. Once this tactic is operational, the cost-exchange ratio of a $13 billion aircraft carrier with 5,000 crew members faces a catastrophic collapse when pitted against relatively cheap, air-launched hypersonic missiles. It's like being the heavyweight boxing champion, the carrier, but your opponent, the J-36, is a sniper sitting in the audience stands. It's not a fair fight, and that is exactly the essence of technological warfare, creating unfairness. Analysis and engagement, this asymmetric strike, logic significantly lowers the barrier to challenging maritime hegemony. It implies that future sea control might not depend on who has the bigger ship, but who has the faster missile and the stealthier delivery truck. Do you think carriers will become obsolete like battleships in the next 20 years? Part 3 Victory of the System From Solo to Swarm But that's not the scariest part. True deterrence doesn't come from a single weapon, but from a system. Reports mention that the J-36 is conducting high-frequency formation flights and data linking with coastal missile units. Meanwhile, China's aviation industry shows a dual-track approach. Chengdu's J-36, heavy, focuses on long-range air force strikes, while Shenyang's new fighter, medium, focuses on carrier operations. This is an incredibly complex industrial ecosystem. By around 2030, the number of these two jet types could exceed 400. This isn't just stacking numbers. This is network-centric warfare. Imagine this scenario. The J-36 acts as a sensor and decoy, thousands of kilometers away, lighting up the enemy fleet's location. Then, via data links, it guides inland missile units or maritime carrier wings to launch a saturation attack. This is multi-domain tactical linkage. In this system, any single platform, whether a Nimitz-class carrier or an F-35, becomes a sitting duck if isolated from its own system support. U.S. experts call the J-36 a nightmare because it fills the missing. Long-range aerial note. In China's anti-access slash area denial, A2 slash AD, architecture. What does this mean for the global tech industry? It means the supply chain's key, security guard, the U.S. Navy, may no longer be able to guarantee absolute control of certain waters at the low cost it used to. Analysis and engagement. This systematized combat capability marks the transition of the Chinese military from territorial air defense to a global air force with offensive and defensive capabilities. If this system capability is exported to other nations, how will the global geopolitical map shift? Conclusion, reframing defense in the digital age. Let's pause and return to our initial question. The J-36, regardless of whether its final specs match the startling media predictions, represents a trend. In the age of digital manufacturing and hypersonics, traditional tonnage advantage is being replaced by velocity and information advantage. This isn't just about a plane. It is a microcosm of a traditional manufacturing powerhouse redefining its role in the digital age. China is proving it can not only manufacture half the world's smartphones but also complex aviation systems that change the rules of war. For the U.S. military, the aging of the Nimitz class and the gap in new fighter induction do constitute a psychological and realistic shock. But for humanity, this balance of technological power might in some counterintuitive way, bring a new kind of caution and stability. Because when mutual destruction becomes this easy, the value of peace negotiations becomes higher than ever. This chess game is far from over.